What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, I hope you've seen a couple of my other videos so you can understand what I'm doing here. But if you didn't and this is the first video you're watching, I want you to understand that what I do is tub and tile refinishing. This job here is a tub and surround. So it's got the plastic cheap walls that apartment complexes just stick on. And they don't wanna pull these off. Why? Because of that window. And because of that window, water gets trapped back in there. And if you've ever done any kind of construction in the bathroom, when you pull those walls off, that's just mud. I mean, it's just a can of worms you don't want to get into. So what they have me do is spray over these uh, cheap surrounds. And in order to do this job, the first thing you got to do is just sand it out. And right now, as you can see, I'm actually sanding out the little corners and crevices where my uh, sander doesn't reach. You just got to take a few minutes to just do this part. I know it's a pain in the butt, um, but when you walk into a job like this, I want you to keep in mind, okay, I'm gonna go sand, hand sand all these little corners. Um, it's probably gonna take about 10 minutes. Now, if you wanna keep a time clock on this, 10 minutes, maybe. And then after that, once you get all the corners in, you hit it with the sander, and you wanna make sure when you hit it with the sander that you get rough spots everywhere there shouldn't be a shiny spot anywhere on that surround um just you know like i have headphones on right now i don't use earplugs because uh i i get ear infections pretty easily so the headphones work just as well for the noise and it protects my ears now remember you're, you're sanding soap scum and stuff like that so you want to keep stuff out of your ears you don't want to get sick especially now in 2022 um and it makes the sanding a lot easier to do so. So get yourself a $20 pair of headphones from any Walmart, um, Bluetooth, so you don't have to worry about the wire. Everybody's got a smartphone, just hook up that Bluetooth. And I'll tell you, you put that music on or a lecture or some kind of podcast playing in the background and you could sand for hours, honestly. <laughs> it's just uh, that much easier. As you can see, I'm, I am creating a lot of dust with this. And now I'm also sanding the tub for any drips from paint from when they uh, paint the ceiling. And uh, the maintenance guys aren't uh, bad, but nobody's perfect. So there's usually some kind of drip of something or maybe a little rust I want to sand off. And that's what I'm doing now before I etch the tub. Um, most of that dust that you see is coming from the walls. I'm just kicking it up off the tub with the sander. Um, this tub was mostly old and beat up. So here it is. And now the etch, as usual, the tub's never been sprayed before. It's what we call a virgin tub. And we're just gonna put some etch on there. Make sure you have your protective equipment, gloves, masks, and uh, I guess uh, for me, headphones, but earplugs uh, if you prefer. But I do say that not only are they more comfortable, they actually keep you company because I'm usually here by myself in the apartments and uh, it's just nice to have a little music in the background that, you know, you don't have to compete. And sometimes I'm with other construction companies and there's other guys, carpenters, and they got their radio playing and their music. And maybe I don't want to listen to their stuff, you know, and instead of getting into it, like some people would say, could you lower that? I don't want to hear that rap music, the language, or I hate country music. I just put my own stuff, you know, and uh, there's no problem. I just go about my business and do my work. Now, it had been like 10 minutes since I etched this tub. And the reason why I make sure that I leave the etch on for more than the allotted time is because I want it to work completely and then die off. Meaning the stuff that the etch does to the tub after so many minutes, it's not doing anything. Just in case I don't get to wash it all off and I miss a spot that does not become a spot that will bubble up in a couple of months. As you can see, I put my ventilator in there to help dry it out and now I'm gonna prep, cover. I know this seems fast and uh, impossible, but with practice, this it would be this fast. I mean, I, I have the video on a, a five times speed, but uh, 
it really doesn't take long. This will take me about four to five hours altogether. That's pretty much it. At the most, taking my time. Let's imagine worst case scenario. It's on the third floor, so I have to carry everything. I don't have a close parking space, so I have to walk a little bit. It's snowing outside. At the most, this is going to take me about four and a half hours. This is with me taking breaks because I have to between coats. Um, this is, you know, this is not like hustle, hustle, grind, grind. The grinding part is over with. It was just the sanding. And now I'm just taking my time um, and I'm taping up the window. Uh, this is a pretty tight bathroom, so this is why I have a bad angle. I'm sorry about that. There really isn't a lot of room. They actually removed the vanity and the toilet from this bathroom to make it easier on me, but it's pretty tight. So every now and then I get to move the camera just a little bit. And as you can see here, I'm doing the faucet and uh, I'm only using tape. I mean, you can use the paper, but I just cover the whole thing up with tape. And then the last strip is the strip that goes around, which I will remove when I'm done painting because I don't want the tape and the paint to stick to the wall when it's completely dry. And when the maintenance guy comes and he yanks on the tape uh, carelessly, he will pull some paint off the wall. So I just cover that up just like that. And then when I'm done spraying, I take that one strip. I leave the rest of the tape on there, but I just take that one strip off. Uh, same thing with the overflow. I take the strip off and I do, do take the tape off the drain when I'm done also. Uh, like, like I've said in other videos, just make sure that your drain is completely dry because if there's just a little bit of water, that tape won't hold. And please use a brand new razor. I mean, just buy them in a pack of 100 for like eight, nine bucks. Um, and just use a new razor every time you do one of these drains. I poke a hole inside with the razor blade so I could stick my finger in there and yank on it because it will be wet with paint after I'm completely done. And I do want to take the... Uh, the cover, the tape off of the drain. Um, I don't wanna leave that there. Please don't do that. I promise you, if you do it once, you get called back and you gotta go all the way back and spend an hour and a half for a touch up for free, you won't do it again. So just avoid it and uh, listen to what I'm saying. Just, uh, just take that off. Um, if you have an accident, at least you're there already and all set up to just touch up that accident. But coming back, uh, days later to fix it or a week later that really really sucks so now I'm just like laying plastic over I'm pretty much almost done I'm just doing the outside plastic on one side and paper on the other and uh, after that I'll be ready to spray now for a job like this uh, four to five hours it's 800 bucks I mean if you do two of these a week that's sixteen hundred dollars and let's say your operating cost is $600 a week. That's $1,000 a week for 10 hours of work. It still adds up to $100 an hour. So, I mean, you place a Facebook ad of the work that you do before and after, and uh, you'll watch the calls will start coming, you know? Now, I don't, I, I don't have the full math of my operating costs. Uh, my wife handles all that. But I can't imagine me doing two of these for $1,600 in a week that I actually, it costs $600 a week as operating costs uh, for my business. Um, and you can get this, kind, this much business. You can get two of these to do every week. And so here we go. Just about done. Okay, sorry about that. Um... I didn't record this part, so I'll uh, walk in here and I'll narrate it here and explain. On the left side, I ran paper all the way down, of course, on the floor. And on the right side, I ran plastic, two reasons. Um, that's the main one, is the light. If I put paper on there, I'll cover the light. Same as the window, I ran plastic on the window. For the same reason, some people will run paper, and we'll just make it darker in here. Um, and it's hard to see where you miss spots. And also the mirror, I want to protect the mirror. Even though it can come clean, it's just a spot that 
has been an eyesore. Every now and then I'll pull paper off and there's paint behind it, it oversprays. So just you know. Another thing I didn't show is I caulked it already, as you can see. And the reason why I did that before instead of after, because I just want it to be completely uniform. It'll just be one solid color. Um, especially, it's just a habit I have, especially if I do a color change where I'm actually making it uh, like a bone color. And then I have to find the caulking that matches that color uh, or else it's really gonna stick out like a sore thumb running a white bead around when everything else is pretty much beige or tan. So I just put the caulking on now, spray right over the caulking, and it'll also protect it from mold because it'll just be the paint over it. So just food for thought. And now we're ready to spray. Okay, so here we go. I just threw some air on there to get any final dust out. And it's time for the primer. As you can see, I used the paper to check my uh, spray pattern. Always do that every single time. You should not spray anything on a tub until you've already sprayed on the wall. Well, the paper, not the wall, but. And as you could see, I'm going in one direction, which is horizontally. And in order to avoid any mistakes, uh, the next time I go around, it'll be vertically. Uh, plus, uh, if you go in the same direction twice, you'll probably make miss the same spots twice it's just your body will move that way and as you can see i just put the air on and through the magic of editing it's been about five minutes and i just come back and like i said now i'm going vertically uh i do practice what i preach this really is the best way and this is the primer so i'm not moving that accurate i'm just getting it all over making sure i get two even coats uh, looks like I ran out of paint there. But uh, anyway, I just want to get two even coats and then I want to get good air and let that thing dry or get tack up really good. Because if I don't and I go to spray the actual paint, um, it'll run. Uh, the paint will just be too heavy and not dry enough and it'll just start sagging, which is like the worst nightmare in the world. It's so much better to just wait. Just wait. Go if you smoke, go have a cigarette. If you don't smoke, go play a video game on your phone. Talk to somebody. Hang out. Uh, just just walk away. That's what I do. I just walk away from the bathroom. Because if I stand there, one minute's going to feel like 10 minutes. And I'm going to want to spray. I want to get in there and get out. And this is the time where you really, you just have to wait. You have to have patience. Um... Think about it, it's $800 and it's four hours of work, four and a half. Just take your time. One day's work, a half a day's work really for 800 bucks. Um, I don't know where you're gonna do that with a you know, high school diploma, um, legally at least. Um, as you can see, now I'm on the top coat, um, which is the actual white. I put some air on there. And I'm um, just putting the two coats on. And this is basically it. As you can see, I'm still checking my spray, making sure everything's okay. Looks like I little, had a little hiccup. Um, always keep your tools around you so you can see what you're doing. And there we go. And like I said, I went horizontally before and now I am going vertically. But two things to remember is to go in different directions for each pass and air, just wait, the waiting time. It's probably the hardest thing that I have to train the guys to avoid uh, accidents, just the waiting. And I just teach them to just walk out of the bathroom. That's all you gotta do, just walk out. Because if you're looking at it, you, you're just gonna get impatient. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. I am done with this tub and surround. Uh, this one actually, I think it took me a total of three hours. Uh, the office opens at 8.30, so I got in this apartment at 9. I'm going to go eat lunch, and it's 800 bucks, and I got another job to do. Uh, today was a pretty good day. And basically, I'm doing everything in reverse. Uh, so the last thing I put on is the first thing I take off, and so forth. And that's pretty much it. I mean, 
They're really, I know you're probably thinking, no, there's something I forgot. You know, I will make some troubleshooting videos for a real, like, uh, pain in the ass stuff, like uh, chips missing or real rust or things like that. But there really isn't anything else there. Um, if you're thinking of doing this, don't be afraid. There really isn't anything. I can train somebody in a matter of two days to be able to do this. And the only thing that's left for them to do is to have the confidence to know that they've been taught everything that there is to do, there is to know to do this business. Um, it's just a matter of prepping, taping, spraying, and pulling. And so here's some before and after pictures. I hope you like them. Um, and this is basically what you have to post on Facebook. You post one of these, you make a Facebook page and watch the calls come in. Thanks.